So hello everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Martyr 2 from Tamaya and 135 skill. <coughs> it's based off of a Panzer 2 chassis. I said wrong in the last video. The Martyr 1 was off different ones, like 38T, Panzer 1, and some French uh, chassis as well. But there were different numbers. So we have the you know normal Tamaya box art here, and here we have some more um, some more kits from Tamaya Tiger One, Yak Panther M10, and the KV1. So here we have the instruction sheet. We have three trees, the three sprues. So contrary to what we normal normally do, here we start building the gun. We have the gun gun tube with the uh, breech and all the other little parts here that go to it, the handle. Well, there's a breech. The breech block. There's the breech block. Breech uh, plate there. And then we have here the cradle for it. I'm putting all these uh, parts to the cradle here onto the the gun tube assembly. Here's the shield. And we put the shield onto the the uh, the gun tube assembly, or the gun assembly. There's more shielding for it. And here we start with the hull. You can see that the road wheel arms are already attached to the hull. Here we have the back plate, the exhaust. Here are the <coughs> the, the sprocket uh, hubs. And here's the floor. And there's a small a little engine. It looks like a little engine that goes to it too. And one of the seats. Then here we go with the sprockets, the road wheels, and the idler arms. And we put all that on. Then here we start assembling the upper hull. A couple of bulkheads and stuff that go here on the inside. There's another one of the shields here. With the, I think this is one of, one of the side shields, with some uh, detail there. So here we have uh, some of the upper hole, upper hole detail. When the shield, the shield goes on here, and these parts, uh, is for the. Uh, The ring for the the gun. This looks like some kind of you know maybe it's a bilge pump or something. Not sure. It uh, looks like an ammo rack. It goes in the other shield. You know, a shield for the top. A plate for the top. And then we have a spare road wheel. We have the tow cable. Ammo box goes here on the front. Put the gun in. Uh, put some tools on the front. The box on the back. Pioneer tools here on the side. And here in the last step, we have some extra track here in the front and the inner uh, the machine gun. And for painting, we have here a couple of options. This is all in Japanese. This only came with one instruction sheet, so I don't have the English one, so I can't tell you what the units are. But I could probably look on the internet. Well, somebody can look on the internet. This is, I think this is one of the box art with the yellow and green. You know, with the desert, with the uh, Africa. Um, Dunkel Gelb and the olive green. 
and this would be the same but with stripes if the colors were matching but this these two are the same color but these aren't at least the writing's not the same on the top part yeah look symbols are different here so this may be the red I don't have the other instruction sheet but uh, it might be, the English instruction sheet may also be on scale mates and this is a solid color so it's probably Africa Dunkle Gub so let's start by taking a look at the lower hull you can see it has places for the the motors and batteries and everything of course we don't use those things anymore uh, I did build, when I was younger I built two that were like that though. Now despite these being molded on, they don't look too bad. There's no kind of texture to it. But there's good separation here in the leaf springs. Good bolt holes all around here. Uh, bolt heads I mean. We've got bolt heads here. They are also good and square. They're not um, you know, hexagon hexagonal, <clears throat> not rounded off or anything. The bottom, you see, nothing there. Probably sand all this down. And if you want to, you could put uh, some, uh, like, take all these pins off and put some. Um, Put a plate over it to uh, fill it in on this side if you want to go to all that. But you know, the sides look pretty good. The bottom needs work. So next here we have the top of the hole. Once again, there is no texture to it except for this uh, anti-slip plating here on the front fenders. This tool is already molded into it, so it's going to be a little harder to uh, to paint. But with a, you know, if you've got small enough brushes, not a problem. And we have some good bolt heads around here. The hinges look pretty good too here. The grills are open, which is a nice little uh, plus there. They're not closed off. A lot of times they're closed off. Some nice looking hinges here as well and some nice panel lines here it's really really nicely separated looks like you could open it even and you could probably uh, you can probably cut them out cut the hinges and open them if you wanted to it looks like it wouldn't be much of a bit uh, much of a problem to do it you'd have to be really careful here with the hinges but I think it there, there's a line here so it should be doable. The bottom of the fenders here, I think you know, that's going to have to be taken care of. If you, I mean, if it's a really big deal to you, a little filling and sanding here on all these, because it's going to be. It is noticeable if you look under the track or on top of the track there because those are the the defender wells <clears throat> see it's pretty stiff and it's kind of bent a little heat would uh, loosen it up a little bit we have these pins you have to cut them cut off of the uh, the guides they wouldn't be center guides I guess they would be outer guides because uh, they have guides on both sides. Some tanks only have center guides. But they also they always have these big pins here. You have to, to trim them off. Like four of them. Now we have big pins here to melt them together, but I usually I usually glue them and then uh, glue them and then melt them with uh, a, a glue them with uh, a super glue and then and then melt them together. They hold better. 
that way, I think. Um, they look pretty good, actually, for being polytrack, I think. There's not a lot of detail on this side, but it's not noticeable when it's on the tank or on the armored vehicle. And this side looks good, I think. Don't see a lot of pin marks or anything in there because they're all on this side. So I give this poly track. It's good. Here we have poly caps for the road uh, road wheels and stuff. <clears throat> That's also pretty normal by these kits. So here we have a tree with a lot of parts. Like I said, there's only three sprues. And here we have our tow cable. It doesn't look too bad. It is definitely workable. We do have a little texture on, on these parts here. The side shields here. Nice bolt heads around here and here. And our pickaxe looks 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 good as well. You see we have ammo. It's not like you know, it's okay. I think you could paint that pretty well. I've always wondered what this is. I think it's the I think it's something for the track. Probably uh um so you can tighten the track when you have to put new on, new track on it. Um at least that's what it looks like to me. You put these in there and then you can probably ratchet it in and out to tighten the track or loosen it when you want to break it. Okay, here's the gun and you see the gun is bent. That's not so nice. If I'm careful, I might be able to unbend it. Shovels look okay, but there's not it looks a little weird here. Not exactly greatly molded on this side. Which is the side we're going to see. This side's flat. So you're not going to have the curve that it should have. Now the inside of the shields is also important. We have big pin marks there. Five on this one. And six on this one. Those are going to be hefty filled and sanded because they're pretty deep. And they will be, you know, you'll be able to see them. We can see here. Maybe. There's a weld bead here on the inside. So that's a little nice, a nice little uh, addition there. There's also pin marks in here. Pin marks there, but I don't think they're going to be noticeable in the end. So except for the except for the big pin marks and the lack of detail on the shovels, and the <laughs> and the bent uh, machine gun here, looks okay. So on this sprue we have our suspension. We have a big plate here. We have our wood box, the big one that goes on the front, the extra track. It already has a plate on it. The attachment plate. We got the road wheels, support rollers, the hubs here, the sprockets. Here's a motor. So here on the road wheels, um, this side looks good. It has really good separation here. Nice bolt heads. The idler wheel. There's a weld bead around here. Around the hub. A nice bolt head on the, the end. There's no bolts here. It looks like it's put in with a bunch of screws or something. The wood texture is not so good on these kit on, on these boxes though. The motor looks like it has some nice detail to it though. For being as small it is, is. I mean, it could probably be a lot better detailed, but it's okay. The road, road wheels on this side, and they're missing the they're missing the rubber 
ring here. See the support rollers also have good on this side. On this side, they're missing the the ring. The crew here, the group crew people, the crew people, <laughs> they don't look bad. I think the uh, cloth could have some more better texture to it, but it's okay. I think with some good painting, you can get that. Here on the plate, we have some handles here. None of them are. I mean. I mean, it's nicely molded, actually. <coughs> Even though I'm not sure if they're right, exactly. Nice bolts here. This extra track looks okay. Not. I mean, this is going to go against the hull, so it do not matter so much. And this side looks good. So that's all okay, really. Except for, uh, I think the road wheels could be better. So here's the last sprue. This has our parts for the gun on it, the shields. This is all the gun parts and some ammunition as well. We have some spent casings here with a lot of flash. And here we have uh, full rounds. We have our gun shield here and here. There's two different ones. Oh no. I forget. It's like double layered. Yeah. This is the inside part and these are the outside parts to it. So we're not worried too much about detail here. This is going to go over it. And here we have a... Uh, this is lightly textured. And good bolt heads. The inside here... We got pin marks here. They're going to have to be taken off. Sand it down. That shouldn't be too hard. The ones that sand down aren't so bad as the ones that have to be filled, I think. So here's the... Well, I forget what this piece is called, but it's part it's part of the, the, the cradle for the gun. You have see little, little bolt heads all along it, and big ones here. It looks pretty good. The gun tube looks good as well. A lot of flash here on these spent ammo casings here, but it's kind of not that bad. Flash isn't so terrible. Flash can be taken off easily. Some flash along here, also some good bolt detail around there. And there's enough little uh, little details here. So all in all, I think this uh, looks like a pretty pretty good kit. For being as old as it is, you can tell by the box how old it is. Um, it has enough detail to it, really. I think it'll turn into a good representation of a Martyr II. And I'll put the... I mean, if you watch the video, I link the aftermarket I think is worth uh, buying into the video and the instructions and into the, uh, the parts for it part. And I also, in the description is a link uh, to Scalemates where the, uh, the whole list of aftermarket is. I do that on every video. I don't know if uh, everybody's noticed that. But I, I noticed a couple of people have commented on it. And... So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And next time we're going to take a look at this Ravel uh, USS Missouri in one 535 scale, which is again... A weird scale uh, that I built already. So until then, hope everybody's had a great weekend. Bye.